The excitement nearly turned into an angry mob. Can you walk us through what triggered this surge and how you collaborated with Peter Billingsley, like personal security and, and the Hammond police to defense this, uh, to defuse this entire situation? Do I need to, do I need to say what movie that is? <laughs> uh, with the gloves on. <laughs> oh, you're good. I mean, that story about Jamie Lee Curtis was amazing, man. I mean. Wow, Lord almighty. Man, you went right for the alien question. <laughs> Flash mob dressed as zombies des decides to take their act a little too seriously, causing panic among the crowd. Welcome back to another major word edition of Talking a Christmas Story with the cast. I'm Yano Anaya, aka Grover Dill, and today we're going to dive into the heart of holiday celebration that not only captured the essence of our cherished film, but also showcased a spectacle of joy order and community spirit at the unforgettable A Christmas Story Ralphie Comes Home event in Hammond, Indiana. Joining us is David Rowe, the security maestro who ensured the festivities remained a joyous occasion for all. Situated in the birthplace of A Christmas Story, this event was a vibrant testament to the enduring legacy of a film that continues to delight generations. Picture this, the streets of Hammond, Indiana bustling and brimming with life transform into a living tableau straight from the scenes of a Christmas story. The crisp winter air echoes with laughter and the palpable excitement of fans adorned in iconic pink bunny suits and raccoon hats. This gathering wasn't just a celebration. It was a grand homage to the film's roots, complete with a touch of exclusivity. Amidst the revelry, specially crafted gift boxes designed to mirror the iconic leg lamp crate and valued at over $2,500 each were bestowed upon the distinguished guests, including the board members, the mayor of Hammond, Indiana, and Peter Billingsley himself for helping us make this event a reality. These weren't ordinary gifts. Each box was a treasure trove of autographed memorabilia and custom collectibles, symbolizing the warmth and high regard of the A Christmas Story family. Here in the studio, I do have the last of these 28 unique boxes, a tangible piece of the magic we created together. As we reflect on the event's success, heartfelt thanks goes to our partners, the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority, the City of Hammond and the Hard Rock Casino in Hammond, Indiana. Their collaboration helped forge an unforgettable experience, weaving the fabric of our community even tighter through the spirit of the season. As we celebrate the spirit and stories from that day, let's welcome David Rode, who stood firm at the helm of security, expertly navigating the ebbs and flows of fan enthusiasm to maintain a harmonious atmosphere. David, thank you for joining us today to share your firsthand experiences and the pivotal role that you played in orchestrating this landmark event. Hey Dave, welcome to the podcast. This is super exciting to have you on talking a Christmas story with the cast. And so what I like to do um, is just let you tell the audience who it is that you are and what you do. Well, it, it, to those that don't know me, I'm, I'm Dave Rohde. Hey, I'm, I've been a police officer over 20 years. I do a lot of celebrity protection. I've had an opportunity and been blessed to uh, meet a lot of good celebrities, a lot of um, – I've just had a lot of good opportunities uh, to um, uh, mingle with the uh, uh, people I admire the most. All right. So I'm going to take you back to uh, the 40th anniversary event that we had for A Christmas Story in 2023 down in Hammond, Indiana, the birthplace of A Christmas Story. And so as the event kicked off with such high spirits, could you describe the initial atmosphere and how your team prepared for such a large gathering? So – when I and I'm I'm used to dealing with large crowds, but when I pulled up to this gathering, it was mind blowing how many people you guys had waiting in line. Um, well, well over hundreds and hundreds of people uh, were were waiting in line, and just the feeling, the atmosphere when I pulled up, people were excited, they were happy, they were enthusiastic. It was I heard absolutely zero arguing, and I've done a lot of conventions where I where I you know I do a lot of celebrity protection. Uh, big names like Jamie Lee Curtis and Norman Reedus and some of these other big names. And you always find the tension in the air. Uh, here, you didn't. Everybody was just glad to be there. Everybody was interacting with each other. It didn't matter how much you knew about the movie or how little you didn't know about the movie. Um, 
people were interacting and learning new things. It was really cool when I got to walk through the line to get in. People were schooling each other on 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 movie uh, 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 on different things from the movie that maybe they didn't know. That, hey, did you know that during this scene, this was in there? They're like. Oh, are you kidding me? No, I didn't know that. And I learned some stuff walking in, too. I was like, really? I thought I was a huge enthusiast, uh, uh, you know, enthusiastic uh, uh, fan of the show. And I learned stuff just walking in. It was fantastic. The mood was incredible. That's awesome. Yeah, it was uh, I, me being inside. I didn't get to see what happened outside. So to have you express your perspective is, is all new for me. So that's that's amazing. Now, at what point of time at the event – the excitement nearly turned into an angry mob. Can you walk us through what triggered this surge and how you collaborated with Peter Billingsley, like personal security and, and the Hammond police to defense this, uh, to defuse this entire situation? Yes. Um, it, it, so the situation happened, you guys were up the whole, the whole group, um, you know, Christmas story group was up taking pictures, group pictures. And I had some of the law enforcement officers from outside come in and said, Hey, if you're thinking about going outside uh, with the celebrities, I wouldn't recommend it. The, the crowd's pretty upset right now because they shut the doors, and it started a mob frenzy outside um, with people wanting to get in that had waited hours and hours to get in, and they were being told, no, we had to shut it off because we had to get you guys somewhere else. I went and told Peter that and and his staff and his handler was wonderful his his right hand man is is great um kudos out to him i'll, I'll let you throw his name out to, to show some props but he is an incredible person um they came to me and said well peter did came to me and said not an option we need to go outside those fans waited i want to see my fans so we go out there and i think you may have already been out there or something because you were you were doing something i walk out and I took Peter and a couple of the other celebrities with me. We went out, and Peter went from person to person, taking pictures, signing whatever they had in their hand. There was nobody there um, taking a tally. Oh, it cost it. He didn't care. It was about taking care of fans. And that right there showed me the true feeling that Peter has for his fan base, uh, to go out there and spend time. Now, it was raining. And we were out there in the rain, and not one person walked away without getting a picture or getting what they had signed by Peter and some of the cast. It was incredible. He spent time with everybody. We weren't rushed. Um, I didn't feel that he was being attacked by – and none of you guys are being attacked outside. Uh, what you guys did by going outside and approaching the, uh, uh, the people that weren't able to get in – was absolutely wonderful what you guys did. Much respect to you guys for doing that. Right on. Yeah, that's that's what we do, man. You know, we're we're all there for the fans uh, in many different ways. And uh, it, I, I didn't know that that actually happened because I had came out prior to us doing our Photoshop because I had gone to the bathroom and I was like, you know what, I'm going to go outside and say hi to all the fans waiting because they've been out here for a long time. So I walked through the tent, gave high fives, did the hugs, did all that stuff, and then came back in. And then that's when we went to go do the photo ops and all of a sudden Pete walked outside and I was like, no, I didn't think anything of it. Like I had no idea that that was actually happening. So that's awesome, man. I'm glad that uh, – all those fans that were at that had that experience, that's amazing. Like that's a once in a lifetime opportunity and experience right there with Peter Billingsley, you know, Absolutely. Ralphie, who he is, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's cool. So, yeah, I mean that that's awesome. Uh, and and by the way, Scott Miniger uh, is Peter Billingsley's personal security guard, right? So he was the one um, that that kind of you know managed and helped you manage that flow. You know, what I mean, of, of what I figured I'd let so, you. I figured I'd let um, you throw out his awesome. name. Yeah. Yeah. I figured I'd let you throw out yeah, his name. Sure. Yeah, he's, sure. he's, a good, he's a good guy. Yeah. I did a podcast with him. Yeah. Oh, I did sweet. a podcast with him already and he had a lot of good things to say about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He took care, so, he took care um, of me. Let's he talk took care about of me. these. That's good. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so let's talk about these these special gift boxes that we gave out. Those exclusive gift boxes, you know, were a highlight of the event for for the mayor, for you know, the board, for Peter. Um, how did you ensure that these valuable items were actually securely handled and presented? Uh, and what was your reaction to these unique collectors' items in that box? Um, for me, I kind of had uh, much hands off with that. Uh, I had a little bit of interaction, but I was more hands off with that. I worked hand in hand with the Hammond 
police officers that were assigned there just to make sure that they were in a secured location. I won't mention where we stored them, um, but in case we go back, because uh, we'll use that same spot again. Um, yeah. But yeah, we we made sure that uh, that that they were they were safe. Only a few people knew about it. Um, we we as a whole worked on that collectively. It wasn't just me. I got to give props out, like I said, the Hammond Police Department did a wonderful job um, uh, up there. They 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 were just wonderful in working hand in hand with me. And what my goal was, and what what my objective was there was your guys' safety and security. Um, everybody, everybody goes home at night. Uh, it's kind of my thing when I, in law enforcement, when I'm FTO and new, new officers, it's not about the arrest and the tickets, it's about everybody going home at night. That's the key. And that's, that's how I approach all these situations was to make sure you guys were safe. That's why, honestly, after the event, um, I left there, drove, drove three hours back home that, that night I was there, the day that I was there, I drove three hours back home and then worked a 12 hour shift. So, I had, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a workaholic. That, that's just what I do. You know, the, the sacrifices I, you know, I, I do to enjoy the things I get to do with you guys. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the the other things that you guys have planned for me. But for for me, it when I do this event, I'm kind of in game mode. Um, if I don't walk away from this event with a headache from being focused the entire time I'm there. Um, then I'm not doing my job because complacency hurts and or kills is what we say in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And I can't be complacent when I'm guarding you guys. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I walked, I, I walked away there, drove home, took about four or five Tylenol and kicked in another 12 hour shift on the road. Um, but yeah, I had a pounding headache, but it was a joyful headache, believe me. And I'm looking forward to it again. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, from, from your personal vantage point, what were some of your personal highlights or particular challenges during the event that you found very memorable for yourself? Um, well, one of the challenges was um, was Peter's line kept getting lost in the sauce, as we call it. Uh, yeah, that's my military terminology now. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing out at you. Um, but we got lost mm -hmm. in the sauce with that. So and we, we had a lot of people that had been waiting a long time to get in. Now, I wanted to stay in my lane, but I was there to help. <clears throat> and anything I can do to help out, uh, you know, I was game for. I'm familiar with how lines run because I've been doing it for years, helping out other celebrities at big events, um, you know, such as Whorehound, Days of the Dead, and all these other big events, uh, the PopCon, all that other stuff. Um, I noticed that his line was getting jarbled up right there with your guys' lines. And people were waiting in your lines when they had a Peter only. Uh, uh, I guess it'd be route that, that they were trying to take. So for me, all I did was I went to some of the staff and said, Hey, I would recommend this. I'm not telling you what to do, but I would recommend that we move this line over here, reroute these guys across. So we don't have angry people waiting in line in long lines when they're here for a certain autograph, uh, you know, for Peter's line or whatever, uh, to reroute them. And so we, it was a simple reroute. It took less than 15 minutes, and the abundance of thank yous that we got for from you guys, from the people waiting, um, the lines were moving quicker. Security was coming and telling me, hey, those lines are moving a lot quicker now that we changed some things. I put double lines outside, uh, or I'm sorry, outside the room to get them flowing a little better. Um, I moved some signage a little bit to direct people a little more because it's like minions. you got to kind of direct people where to go, and if you don't, then they get lost in a sauce. So as long as we could get them through, um, <clears throat> that was great. Also, again, my goal there was to protect you guys, but I also wanted to make the experience fun for the people attending. So I walked the lines. I talked to people. Um, you know, I gave them that enthusiasm from the security side of it that, hey, I'm just as excited to be here as you guys are to meet these guys. Uh, Although I've, I've spoke to a lot of you guys and have hung out with a lot of you guys and know, know a lot of you guys, it's still fun for me. It's still exciting for me. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, and it off topic, you know, I'm, I'm getting used to that now, you know, with my daughter who is now an actress and, and just finished filming a movie. You know, I've got, I get to experience that from a father's standpoint now of how excited fans are when they approach you and do things like that. So by me doing this kind of stuff with you guys kind of helps me out 
with with her in 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 her appearances. So I appreciate you guys for helping me help her. <laughs> yeah, you know that's you know I got to tell you that it showed that you were that because you your presence not only gave people the feeling that it felt more secure, but you were so excited to be there that it was a joy. Like literally you made it fun to feel safe. And and that's a rare commodity to have. And I got to tell you, that's probably because of the environment. You know what I mean? So that was kind of like leads into my next question is that you kind of, you kind of touched on it in the beginning of our podcast, but you know, I know that you've, you've managed and worked with a lot of various celebrities and how did the atmosphere with the Christmas story cast at this event compare to like other assignments that you, that you worked? Honestly, it didn't feel like work is, is how I could say it. It mm, didn't yes, feel like that. work. It was, um, it was awesome. absolutely wonderful to, um, to see the excitement, standing back to see the excitement of true fans, not somebody there just to get an autograph to sell online or whatever, because you have those. You're going to have those at any convention, any appearance. Sure. But true yeah. True fans of the movie, true fans of the actors, and 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 people who actually follow your careers, um, not just from the Christmas Story movie, but they knew a lot about you guys and what you've been involved in, and some of the philanthropy stuff that you guys do and everything. It was just a wonderful atmosphere. I'm not saying the other conventions don't have that, but what I will say is this. Nothing compared to what I felt at 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 your convention at the the, the Christmas story. Uh, I'm going to call this the Christmas story reunion because it felt like a reunion. It didn't feel like work. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. That you know that that's a blessing to be able to to have that to share that to be able to create that experience for you because you are a fan. You know what I mean? It's like you love oh, the movie, oh. sure, but. To be in the midst, uh, to be in the midst of all of us, and see and feel the energy of all the fans, and I mean that's this is that takes it to the next level. So mm -hmm. that's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I do have another question for you. Um, so, can you share um, about some really cool celebrities that you provided security for, uh, and about those experiences, and then? Kind of like, you know, because I know that you that you shared that it didn't feel like work. And um, have you had that kind of experience with other celebrities at all? Or is it more like you're on point, always aware, situational awareness, always taking care of your clients, you know, well-being? So is there any delineation as to what your past experiences are or, you know, compared to the event that, that you worked for us? Well, I, I always go into it wanting to have fun. And, and I always try to make it fun for the celebrities and make it fun for, um, uh, for the attendees as well. Um, there has been a couple different celebrities that, that I can name off, uh, that have just been wonderful to work with. Um, one that comes into mind right off the bat, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is one of the, most absolute sweethearts you will ever ever have the opportunity to meet um she's she has such a wonderful heart and, and i love her dearly um she found so when she made an appearance here in indianapolis i'll just give you a quick rundown i won't take up too much of your time quick rundown so she was making an appearance at one of the conventions here in Indianapolis, and she doesn't do many of those appearances. She was a little worried about her safety. So I won't mention who reached out, maybe her, maybe another big-time celebrity, reached out and, and asked if I could provide them with security. At that time, I had a ghost hunting show on TV. Yeah, you heard it, a ghost hunting show that, that we, were, we were setting up for TV. And I was there signing autographs. So I said, well, I'll do it intermittently, you know, from, you know, I'll, I'll leave my table come and guard you, but I'll put two officers that I trust with my heart uh, on you. And so we, we guarded her all weekend. And I spent a lot of time at her table just because I was my huge Jamie Lee Curtis fan, not going to lie. So, um, so afterwards, we went up to her, her room where she was getting ready to fly back, and she asked me, um, you know, how I get paid. I said, well, 
I'm, I'm not getting paid. I'm doing this for free. And she was mind, it just blew her mind that I did the whole weekend for free. And I said, my officers didn't get paid either. We did this for free out of respect for you and what you do for the, the, the kids at the different, uh, uh children's hospitals. Cause she was raising money for a children's hospital out of, out of California. I have two, uh, Riley children myself. Uh, uh, one miracle baby as well. And so I knew she was donating that money to kids. So we donated her time. And she asked me uh, where my family was. I said, well, I've got them waiting out in the hallway. They, 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 I wasn't going to have them come in here. She goes, get out there and get those, get that family in here and, and, and let them meet me. So we came in and we spent, I'll have to send you some pictures. We spent probably an hour and a half, two hours up in her room with her intimately meeting my family and my kids and uh and she just took a fond uh, uh attachment to 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 my kids so she postponed her flight two or three times so she could spend time with my family now a week goes by and i That's get amazing. this anonymous box delivered to my house now i live way out in the country in the middle of nowhere <laughs> being a military and a law enforcement guy yeah i live way out in the middle of nowhere and i get this box that's not marked so i'm gently put it in the back of the car <laughs> and I drive down the road about a mile and I open it up and the note <laughs> inside of it says says Dave these are for your lovely kids love Jamie Lee and I open it up and she had That's sent me amazing. all of her children's books that that she's co-written with uh with someone else and she went through every book crossed out the names and put all my kids names in it and then signed it to them what a wonderful person she is. I just I love her dearly. That 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 one um there there's so many that I could name off that that were just wonderful to work with. Uh Tony Todd is another one from Candyman. Excellent person, great heart. Uh I love him dearly as well. Um Robert England uh Do I need to do I need to say what movie that is? <laughs> uh, with the gloves. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Yeah. I mean, that story about ah. Jamie Lee Curtis was amazing, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, it just it just shows it just shows the big love and heart and compassion and caring that people have, you know what I mean, out there. And that's also very rare from what I hear. Now I've I've never really came into any circles of individuals that had that kind of negative dark energy. It's always been a very positive, loving energy that I've always had when I've been exposed or met, you know, or even fanboyed on specific other celebrities. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's there's, cool. Now that's there's, awesome. There's, there's one that that's I cool. won't mention. I won't mention her name. Um, she just recently passed. So anybody that knows who I'm talking about will knows of a female celebrity that just passed. I won't mention her name because I, I, I try not to – dig too much, tell too much, too many secrets behind the, behind closed doors. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm going to try not to get choked up because she was absolutely wonderful. She was a blessing. Uh, she'll always have a place in my heart. Um, the conversations that we had, I'm going to try not to get choked up because I'm going to miss her a lot. Um, she, she and I had some candid conversations uh, while I was while she was at a convention, and I was there guarding all the celebrities um, that I will cherish for the rest of my life. And and unfortunately, she's no longer with us just recently. And and I'm definitely going to miss her a lot. Yeah, you know that's um that's the other aspect about what it is that you do, what is it we do, because you know life is short, man. And when we meet people that we feel you know um, feel this this innate nature of love and almost like family, you know what I mean? Literally, it's like you can meet somebody and just feel like y you can trust them, you can love them, um, you would trust them, your kids with them, you know what I mean, to a certain extent, but still it's like that, it's that feeling that we all get. And again, you know, it's like you don't know when when to the, tomorrow is not gonna come, you know what I mean? Right. So it really does inspire me and inspire all of us to just take every day at a time and be present with the loved ones and be present with people and and do our best to help people as much as we possibly can you know what i mean in those kind of situations so that's amazing man thank you for sharing that because there's well i'm sure we all have those kinds of special relationships with maybe people celebrities maybe not but maybe loved ones or you know family members where you know there's just that special bond uh where you know when they they 
when it's time for them to move on, you know, it's difficult to let go, but we have those, those cherished memories, you know what I mean? And that's another reason why, you know, Dave, we do this podcast is because, you know, the cast of A Christmas Story, we've already lost several of them, you know what I mean? And as we all age and as we all get older, nobody lives forever, but you know, uh, the digital age will probably live forever. Podcasts will probably be accessible forever. So that's why we do this is to get, everybody who has a passion and love for this movie and all the cast in front and behind the scenes to share their stories and their experiences because life is a storyteller right so i'm going to switch up gears here david because it's time to uh put your security your security skills and your policing <laughs> skills to the ultimate test with game time all right so i've got this game segment uh we call it on the spot security. Uh -huh. right, so I'm gonna throw some completely outlandish and over the top scenarios at you. Um, these aren't your typical security situations, okay? So they're infused with a dose of absurdity and a pinch of hilarity, all right? So your task <laughs> is to come up with a quick creative solution on how you would handle these wacky challenges. So ready to think on your feet? All right, All right let's, let's do All it. All right, so first one is an alien. The first one is an alien invasion at a premiere movie. Imagine you're handling security at a major movie premiere when suddenly a group claiming to be time travelers warns of an impending alien invasion right at the venue. How would you secure the area and keep the event running smoothly? Wow, Lord Almighty. Man, you went right for the alien question. <laughs> well, <laughs> woo. It's a great topic, man. Nice. <laughs> man, well, I, I'd hope I'd have uh, uh, the men in black on, on, on fast dial. That'd be my number one. Um, let's see. <laughs> Boy. What, what, what great answer, do? man. I love well, it. Well, I, I will tell you this. If, 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 if we're doing a re-premiere of uh, a Christmas story, uh, or or any sort of Christmas story with you guys in it, they're gonna have to wait their turn because we're there to watch the movie. We're there to watch the movie. Aliens come second. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great stuff. But I I loved your answer. Men in black. Let's get the MIB in there. Take care of the aliens so we can continue the show. Right? Absolutely. That's, awesome, man. That's good. Fast. Thank you. All right, so they're going to have to wait their turn for pictures, is... by the way. they got to wait their turn for pictures. They can't just cut, cut to the front of the line. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so next one is the Invisible Cloak Heist. So <laughs> you're in charge of security at a high-tech gadget convention when a prototype invisibility cloak goes missing. The thief is invisible and mingling among the attendees. What's your strategy to catch someone you can't see? Well, the first thing I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to grab fire extinguishers, every single fire extinguisher I can grab. And I'm just going to unload. Yes. <laughs> Without notice, I'm going to unload on that entire room until, <laughs> until, I can, until I can find them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that cloak, I'm going to take it, and then I'm going to... I'm going to go invisible for a while myself because I've always wanted that invisible cloak. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm going to commandeer that invisible cloak for just a bit. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going to use a fire extinguisher. That was amazing. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that's, that's smart. Super smart. All right. So next one is the zombie flash mob. <laughs> So, during a large outdoor festival, a flash mob dressed as zombies decides to take their act a little too seriously, causing panic among the crowd. So, how would you differentiate between the actors and any potential real threats and calm everyone down? Well, I will say this. It, whether or not you're, you're, you're living or you're dead, and we're going to assume they're, they're, they're living, the taser does not lie. I'm just going to say that right now. The taser does not lie. Okay. <laughs> and, and once you click, I, I, I've been in some hairy situations, but once you unclick that and, and, and they see that red dot, 
99.9% of the time, it doesn't matter if you're a zombie or not, you're going to comply. So uh, no. what, what I would do, uh, it, it depends. You know, I like to dance myself. So if they're a dancing flash mob, I might, I might dance for a minute, dance up to each one of them. And, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying oh, I don't know what happened. I'm just saying, I don't know. Move on to the next one. I don't know. I don't <laughs> That's you know awesome. I still get me fired, right? No, I'm just kidding. That's I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, that's all. That's all. All right. Next game segment is called the Yodeling Crisis. So oh, you're securing a quiet, right? You're securing a quiet, solemn event when a guest suddenly starts yodeling loudly, disrupting the peace and refusing to stop. How do you handle the situation without escalating tensions or drawing more attention to the disruptor? Whew, man, that's tough because if somebody's yodeling, you're going to have all the attention on you. So, I mean, honestly, I'd probably yodel right up to them, snatch them up, and take them out to the other room. And we'll just yodel together as we skip out that door. And that way it, it changes, nice. and all, all joking aside, changes that intensified situation to a humorous side. Did, did I just see that? Did I just see the cop yodel up to the person, grab them, and they yodeled out the door together? And now you'll get a laugh out of it. It'll drop the tension back down, and then they can focus right back to what you guys are doing. Although I've never yodeled, so it would be comical. I'm, I'm sure it'd take a while for people to stop laughing. <laughs> That's awesome. Right on. Very smart. Very smart. Meet the energy and then uh, diffuse the situation, right? That's great yep. stuff. I love it. All right, cool. Next one, the mysterious fog machine. So at a celebrity gala, a mischievous prankster activates a powerful fog machine, filling the entire venue with thick fog, obscuring vision and causing confusion. How would you safely guide guests and restore order? So my first concern would be celebrity protection at that point. And th this one's probably not going to be as funny as the other ones. Because I'll take this one pretty serious because I've actually had something similar to this happen. Um, so the, the first thing I would do is, because I'm going to be close to the celebrities anyway, is I would grab up the celebrities, escort them out my, out my egress, get them out of the room to a safe location. At that point, then I would focus on making sure you guys were safe. At that point, I could now move in and, and ensure the safety of the guest at that point because, all, uh, you know, all joking aside, my goal is to protect the celebrities. That's why I'm there. Uh, ultimately, I want everybody protected, but my number one goal is celebrity protection. So I would make sure that I get you guys out first uh, to a safe location, and I would have already scouted safe locations. I would have had a safe room, um, which, by the way, I don't know if I told you this, I had a safe room set up um, at – at, at, at the Christmas story uh, uh, event as well. Um, I didn't tell you guys where it was. I didn't tell anybody where it was because that's my safe room to take you guys if something was happening. Nobody to know where you guys are at but me at that point until I can assure that the threat isn't internal, the threat isn't external. Now now we can start letting people know. Scott knew, uh, you know, and stuff like that, but it was to make sure that I had a secured location for you guys. But, yeah, I would make sure that I get you guys to safety first and then focus on the, on the, uh, on the crowd itself. That one wasn't near as funny. I apologize. Awesome. We'll, we'll make you laugh. We'll make you laugh. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's all right. I mean, you did an amazing job with those crazy curveball questions. So thank you for showing all of us how even the most bizarre scenarios – are just another day's work for a pro like yourself, man. So, you know, in closing here, I've got one more question. And I think this question will resonate too with you. So I'd like to ask you, you know, Dave, how were you introduced to the movie and what does A Christmas Story mean to you? So <clears throat> I was introduced to the story a long, long time ago. I'm, I'm old. I'm an old guy. Um, so <laughs> when it first came out, uh, my family actually took me to, to see it, and I fell in love with it. Um, funny story, uh, my, and I'll get a little personal. My wife's mother went to school with Mr. Shepard, so they all knew each other, which is real weird. Um, that's kind of a, a weird connection. 
So, because they're from up in the region as well. That, that's where my wife's family's from. It's up in the region. So, um, okay. So I had that. It's weird how I had that connection when I met my wife and I, and, and then heard that story. Being that the Christmas story is my all time right. favorite movie of all time, Christmas, wow. uh, holiday, any type of you know, scared me, any type of movie. It's my all time favorite movie. I watch it all year long, just like about a hundred million other people do. Um, but when I got introduced to it, fell instantly in love in it. I've had a lot of people tell me that I grew up in the wrong era because I like the old school <laughs> stuff, the, the 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 Frank Sinatra's, the Dean Martins. The Sammy Davis Juniors, the Rat Pack era. I'm kind of that. That's kind of my thing. And when I see this yeah. movie, it, it it puts me back into a time that for me was innocent. Um, although I wasn't alive during that time, I'm not that old. <clears throat> um, it still brings me back to an innocent time. So when I watch the movie, I remember myself mm. being a kid. And I can forget about everything that I'm dealing with in society, today's society, and I can be that kid that had no um, no worries on their mind, just, what, you know, where are we going to go play ball on the street? What, what time are we getting to, uh, to the park? What, you know, when are we getting together with friends? That sort of thing. And when I watch the movie, it puts me back in that time when I was young. Now, <clears throat> the connection I have with the movie is, honestly, I, I do believe I, I was – I'm born in the wrong era because I enjoy all of the stuff that was going on during that time period. Um, <clears throat> there's – how do I want to say it without sounding corny? Um, but there's a feeling I get in my heart when I watch the movie and I put myself there. Um, there are all kinds of feelings I get – when I get to experience the movie every single time I put it on, it's, it's that innocent feeling. Um, do I laugh? Absolutely. Do I laugh? I laugh my tush off. Um, <clears throat> but I connect with a lot of the stuff that goes on. I had an opportunity. Uh, I'm not sure if you knew this. I had an opportunity when I had my ghost hunting show to investigate the Christmas story house. And, um, Back when I had, got with the with the with the, the the old owner, and granted us permission to stay in the house for three days, stayed up upstairs in the upstairs. I won't give too many secrets away, but we did. We investigated the house, and the museum, and the gift shop. And the first night we were there, this this is this is a story I I rarely tell anybody. Um, the first night we were there, all the crew is upstairs sleeping. I'm downstairs on the couch. Now, we all know that the exteriors were shot in Cleveland. Anybody that knows the movie knows that. Right, and right. the interiors were shot right. uh, in Canada on soundstage. So for me, yeah. just yeah. being downstairs in the front room, I'm sitting on the couch. I look over. I see the leg lamp. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking around. Nobody's awake but me. It's dark in there, a little bit dark. You know, some lights are on. I'm looking around. And... I got a tear in my eye, but it was a joyful tear because that was a dream for me to sit there and feel what it was like to be in that era, but also feel what it was like to be part of the movie. And it was that innocent feeling I got back, that innocent feeling that I'm sure all of your fans get when they watch the, when they watch the movie, that joyful innocence. And I remember sitting there, and out loud I said, this is cool. There ain't nobody there, but I said it for myself. It was cool. And so I, I'll, I'll cherish that along with the times that I've had uh, the opportunities to spend times with you guys and the times that we're going to have because uh, I'm sure there will be things coming up that you'll be, hey, hey, Dave, what are you doing? And I'll be like, whatever you need me to do, you know, I'll be there for you guys. I mean, I love you guys to death. You're like my brothers and sisters. Appreciate that, man. You know, thank you for sharing that that very – <clears throat> that very intimate experience you had because having that opportunity to be in that era, uh, to be in that presence and then just to, to have that feeling pop up, man. I mean, that, that is, that is a very, very special moment in time for you. So I, I just say, I take my hat off for you for, for sharing that. Um, because it does tell the world that, 
you know, this this movie that you saw when you were a child, your parents took you to the movie theater, resonated with you so much that it almost brought what well, it did. It brought up this feeling that that's the era that you feel most comfortable in when life was a lot simpler, right? And the the scenes and what the kids go through and what Ralphie goes through, just, you know, being so focused on getting that Red Rider or just getting that one thing that we, that we all want. I got to tell you, you know, um, Ian Petrella said it, the best was we all have a red rider in our life it doesn't necessarily mean it is a red rider but there's that one thing as a child or is that one thing as as a teenager or one thing as an adult that we really strive to do our best to acquire and to get and we go all out to try to achieve it and eventually when we think we failed all of a sudden what god gives us that present and it just happened to be dad right dad was like I know that you wanted this the whole time. I was watching you work. I was watching you work so hard, son. And you know what? I'm going to reward you because you deserve, because you did not give up. And so, you know, those those special moments that you share for the movie, we have that that tether between millions of us fans that there's something about our childhood. There's something about this movie. There's something that tells us that we are all interconnected in a way that shows us those life lessons that brings back that childhood memory and it's like you know every time i think about christmas man there's a couple of times in my life that resonate that pure essence of love and joy and excitement and that's yeah. what the movie does for me too every time i hear gene shepherd come on every time i know that 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 music starts in the background i get this overwhelming feeling throughout my entire body um, of this thing that happens within all of us. So thank you, Dave, for sharing that, man, because that's important to share. It's important that the fans continue to hear that because why? This is the essence of what's going to help us keep this legacy alive forever, for as long as we can. As we conclude today's insightful episode, I want to express my deepest thanks to David Rode for his invaluable contributions today. David, your expertise in securing events seamlessly blends with your passion for a Christmas story and your stories today have enriched our understanding of the challenges and triumphs in managing such a significant gathering. It's clear that the safety and joy of every attendee are always at the forefront of your efforts. We also extend our gratitude to our partners, the South Shore Convention and Visitor Center, the City of Hammond, and the Hard Rock Casino in Hammond, Indiana. Your collaborative spirit helped turn the A Christmas Story a Ralphie Comes Home event into a truly unforgettable experience, reinforcing the bonds of our vibrant community. And to you, our loyal listeners, thank you for tuning in and engaging with us. Your enthusiasm fuels our journey through the beloved tales of a Christmas story. So don't forget to subscribe and activate notifications to stay updated with our latest episodes. We have many more enriching stories to share, filled with heartfelt laughter and heritage. As we move swiftly towards fall, let's take a moment to cherish our families and remember the timeless lessons from our favorite film. Let's honor the memories of Darren McGavin, our beloved old man, and Melinda Dillon, our wonderful mom who brought so much life and love to their roles. Their performances continue to inspire us to appreciate the quirks and qualities that make each family unique. Until next time, may your days be filled with simple joys and profound warmth of family. Good night, everyone. And remember, every moment can and will be special if we carry the spirit of Christmas in our hearts. Welcome home to the family we cherish with every single episode. Who's next? That deal guy.